There's a ton to cover, lots of information in the Airbnb space that we need to clear up. But before we jump into that, I need to give you two bug reports. If you're an Airbnb host, you need these right now. First, if you're collecting manual taxes, there's been reported that there's a bug. If somebody extends their reservation while you're also manually collecting taxes, Airbnb is not actually paying you the tax portion of the extension. So they're actually keeping that money and you're going to need to contact Airbnb to get that resolved. Second, Airbnb advertised that if you switch your policy to flexible for the period of time during COVID-19, that they would give you an SEO boost and you get 3% back because of the credit card transaction fee for doing that. But with the way they designed the system and the delay, a lot of hosts that just jumped on and switched to flexible don't get this, bo that don't get this bonus because there's actually a temporary flexible setting on Airbnb. So hosts, if you're set on flexible, go back to the listing that's flexible, set it back to strict, and then there should be an option to temporarily make it flexible for COVID-19, and that's how you get those bonuses. So that's your bug report. Now, let's talk about the last couple of months of information changes that Airbnb has made and what these actually all mean, the literal definitions of what we're actually going through, so that way none of us are under the belief of something false, because there's been some heavy stuff going on and we need to know the truth. Let's jump in. Airbnb family, YouTube world, welcome back. So over the last couple of months, COVID-19 just destroyed the travel economy and Airbnb has been scrambling to do new things. Some of these things are ill-timed that have nothing to do with coronavirus. Some of them are in direct response. So what I'd like to do is clear the air on some things that we all need to know the truth on. So first, let's talk about a very big video that I did that went kind of crazy viral. It's about a woman's testimony of Airbnb not giving her her refund. I spoke to my Airbnb business manager about this. They investigated it and gave me information on this and asked me to update you guys. So this one, this is a straight request from Airbnb, public statement kind of thing. So this guest both booked and then canceled before the extenuating circumstance policy went into place. The refund that she did get was override to the current policy because they decided since it fell in the, you know, the window of the extenuating circumstances policy that they were going to grandfather it in. When they grandfathered it in, they paid her 100% back of what she paid. But she only paid for half of the reservation because Airbnb's got this book now, pay later feature. So the money she got back was her half of the reservation that she paid for minus the service fee. Now this was an Airbnb Plus listing. The service fee for Airbnb Plus is 12.9%, not the usual 11% that we see on most. So 12.9 times two is basically 25 point something percent. So what this looked like, because they kept that, they kept the 12.9% on the whole reservation, even though she paid for half plus service fee, and when they gave her back the half, it looked like they kept 25% of the reservation. In this case, they kept 12.9%. So they did not actually keep the taxes, they just kept the service fee. So this testimony from an angry traveler created some misinformation, but because of this, there's still positive that came. Because of that video and other people's outrage, Airbnb, an hour and a half after that video went viral, Airbnb released an email stating that they will not be collecting service fees from COVID-19 cancellations. So plus one for hosts there and a win for the guests. That was a much more fair stance. So thank you Airbnb for making that maneuver, even though it should have been the case right away. Now this does bring up a concern, one for hosts who have strict cancellation policies and we haven't had to consider this before. If a guest only pays for half of the reservation and then five days before arrival they cancel, well they only have paid for half. Airbnb, instead of giving you 100% of that fee for or 100% of your rate for the cancellation as they're supposed to, they'll only give you the half that they collected. So your strict cancellation policy cannot apply because Airbnb did not collect it. You could possibly put this guest into collections, which is something that we've done with Airbnb, where a guest arrived, did not pay, had to get kicked out, and then we are trying to collect the money for the back rent. We can call Airbnb and put them into collections and ultimately Airbnb is responsible for days where guests have stayed. Even if the guest doesn't pay Airbnb, they still are responsible to you for any dates that are paid. But if a guest cancels ahead of time, you only get the half. And I've never tried to collect the other half by putting that guest in, into collections for a cancellation policy. That is something that you have to be careful for because it's possible that the rate of default can go up for guests that only pay for half and then when the bill comes due, they just may not have the money to pay it. Beyond that though, the extenuating circumstances policy has some fine print that hosts are getting trapped in. Two things. If you cancel a reservation willingly, a guest asks you to cancel, you know how Airbnb says the guest would like you to cancel the reservation and if you don't take action, then the reservation will stay valid. This, this is a trick, is essentially what this is. 
Airbnb wants you to willingly cancel COVID-19 extenuating circumstances policy reservations because if you do it willingly and Airbnb just doesn't override and do it themselves, they don't owe you the 25%. So we have hosts that were being good sports and being nice to guests because they knew they'd get their 25%. And now Airbnb is like, well, no, you actually willingly canceled that reservation. It doesn't qualify anymore. So Airbnb is using that as a way to save a bunch of money on cancellations. The 25% that they are paying is not 25% of what you would have actually really collected prior to the pandemic. It's only on what your cancellation policy would have retained. Let me give you an example. Let's say you had a $1,000 reservation. The guest cancels 16 days from now. You have a strict cancellation policy. Well, they're due 50% back. They'd get 500, you would get 500. Airbnb will give you 25% of your 500 share because that's all that the cancellation policy would have been due. Let's say the guest cancels five days in advance but only paid for half of the reservation, like that first example. Well, you'd still only get 25% of the half that they collected, even though you were due 100% of 1,000, they only collected 500, so they're only giving you 25% of what the payout would have been. Now, this is, gets even worse, because if you think about the implications of this, Airbnb advertised that people cancel with 100% refund. They even encouraged people to cancel. The uh, total volume of cancellations that host experienced was on the, on the backs of Airbnb's encouragement to cancel. So we have reservations, we're getting 25% of the full amount we were owed, or when guests canceled with 50% back, we're getting 25% of that. But when guests canceled further away or enough in advance that they got a full refund anyway, we're getting 25% of zero dollars. Airbnb is not paying hosts 25% of cancellations that they are responsible for or that they instigated. They're only paying 25% as to what their policy was. So even though Airbnb interfered with our business and encouraged people to cancel, advertising that they can get off scot-free, those ones are Airbnb's fault and they're not going to pay us a dollar for those. So there's a lot of gray area there and they really screwed hosts once again in that category. And last extenuating circumstance mess up. This is only for reservations booked before March 14th with an arrival time before May 31st. That is the window of time that hosts could get 25% of the cancellation back. Airbnb can extend the extenuating circumstances policy past May 31st. They can if they want to. And they're sending emails out right now to hosts that say, hi, you have one or three or five reservations that are coming up in June that may cancel for a full refund because of the extenuating circumstances policy. This is not covered under our $250 million host guarantee program for cancellations. So we recommend that you contact these guests. See, Airbnb wants you to go ahead and proactively contact these guests and do like a mutual cancellation with them before it comes to that time that they would cancel, you know, they would have to cancel it under their extenuating circumstances policy. I don't know why exactly, but they're trying to make that happen. And if guests cancel due to the extenuating circumstances policy in June or July, hosts will get zero dollars of that because the policy will override. And Airbnb did just add pandemic to their new terms of service, but hold your ground because any bookings that were made before the change of terms of service, the contract is time stamped for the old terms of service. So Airbnb's pushing the pandemic as an extenuating circumstances policy shtick. Um, any ones that they were not allowed to really do this legally still apply because they're older reservations. Only reservations made after the terms of service change have the language for the new extenuating circumstances policy. So I'm not involved in the class action lawsuit, but for those of you who are involved in the Airbnb class action lawsuit, all these future reservations made before March 14th still don't have pandemic listed in their extenuating circumstances policy. Know that. Now, another host cancellation fiasco that I was made aware of today is that a host received $0 for this reservation. Let me show you the screenshot. This grayed out $0 section is how much money a host is going to get for the reservation canceled or not. If a guest cancels and you get 50% of the reservation, that 50% will show up here where that grayed out zero is. So this is proof that the host is getting $0. When the host went and spoke to the guest about it, the guest's testimony is, Airbnb offered them an option, either 50% cash back or a 100% travel credit for their stay. This is for the money for the reservation, not just the service fee is what the host is telling us. But the 50% that they did not get back is not going to the host. Airbnb is keeping it. 
So Airbnb is keeping more than just a service fee allegedly here. They're also keeping the half of the reservation that's due to the host. This is unethical and this is a mad grab for cash in order to keep cash on hand by Airbnb. It's a desperate move. If any of you are experiencing something similar to this, please put it in the comments. Um, there are multiple journalists that I'm speaking to right now who would love to know your experiences with Airbnb not paying you what's promised. So moving on from the extenuating circumstances policy and all the misinformation around that, there's two other things we need to talk about. First was Airbnb did something super scary about a month ago where in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic where we thought that everything was already going bad enough, they started pushing users towards hotels and we did not understand why. It seemed like their move was is we don't want you staying in an Airbnb home because it's unsanitary. So instead, use our newly leveraged hotel tonight purchase and start booking hotels on the Airbnb platform. It looked like a, like a, a pivot out of short-term rentals into trying to diversify their booking base into booking hotels on Airbnb. And that looked highly unethical too. We found out later that this was actually part of Airbnb's new security screening because of the, you know, there's been like crimes in Airbnb properties where people have died. Airbnb is trying to prevent people under the age of 25 from booking. Multiple other factors like if they're booking within a certain range of where they actually live, length of stay, stuff like that. And so what they did is anybody who was part of that security screening and they fell out of being allowed to book a whole place, the language just said book a hotel instead. Well, Airbnb did change the language on this notification, so it seems a little less crazy now. Let me show you a screenshot of that. They're telling guests, well, because you don't pass the screening for booking a whole, whole place, you know, security reasons, you can either book a private room or a hotel. So they're not just pushing people to hotels anymore, but they're pushing people to private rooms as well. So they're not just ripping it completely away from hosts, but they're still doing that. Now there's some bugs in this screening algorithm that Airbnb needs to know about. One, a host reported to me that somebody was trying to pay $1,300 for like a nine day stay. And because they were under 25, they were not able to book. This is not a party reservation. I don't know what kind of party animal throws a nine day long party. Not even Gatsby does that. So what Airbnb needs to really consider here is there's other factors in play. If the reservation is more than three days long and has a minimum payout of a certain amount or higher, that becomes a less risky reservation. I don't know somebody who's looking to throw like, okay, there's been some bad stuff that's gone on in Airbnbs, like people shooting rap videos and just doing crazy junk. And we'll cover that in a future video, but I don't know anybody who's going to stay for four days to shoot a rap video and pay $800 for a reservation to do that. They're looking for a cheap, low budget place to throw a crazy rager, look cool, get in and get out in a night or two. Leave that feedback for Airbnb. I'm going to leave a description to the leave feedback link if at all possible so you can give collective feedback on this. Their 25 or younger anti-party algorithm needs tweaking based on length of stay and total dollar amount paid. There needs to be a combination there to prevent hosts from losing money on perfectly good reservations. And that brings us to yesterday's video. Now, Airbnb has a new cleaning initiative where you know you block for 24 hours and your housekeepers wear PPE gear and do all this good stuff. Otherwise, you do something called booking buffer where there's a 72 hour minimum difference between stays where somebody checks on a Friday, people can't check in until probably like Monday. This came out when Airbnb released in their own community forums on their news section. This is something that we're doing. They attempted to sell it like, this is gonna be a cool thing for guests. This was really geared at convincing guests to book on Airbnb. This is gonna be a new collection. We're taking advisements from the ex-attorney Surgeon General, somebody like that. Um, we're, we're taking advisements from the CDC, experts, blah, 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 even this company Ecolabs, and they like plug Ecolabs for some reason, I don't know why. And in the mix of this, the way that they wrote this gave the world a heart attack. What it basically said is you have the option to opt into this cleaning program Alternatively, if you cannot opt into this one because you can't commit, you can opt into booking buffer, one or the other. So I reached out to my representative at Airbnb. I'm like, please tell me this isn't true. Well, she's like the 24 hour thing is an opt-in. And I'm like, yeah, and if you don't opt in, then there's a 72 hour default. And she's like, well, actually no, both of these are opt-in. So explanation is you can opt in to be part of a new collection and your options for being part of that collection is the enhanced cleaning protocol with 24 hours down or the booking buffer, 72 hours down. And then by both of those happening, you can be part of a new collection, something like work collection or Airbnb Lux style where a traveler can check for coronavirus safe listings. Thanks for the heart attack, guys. Um, and so what's really funny is 
in yesterday's video, somebody put in the comments, is Airbnb allergic to communicating? Like, really, do we have to find out this stuff secondhand? And apparently, yes, they're allergic to communicating, and because of their fear of leading their host community, they're just kind of leaving things up to interpretation and doing a real bad job of it. The last thing you guys might be wondering about is when do you get paid out on the 25%? Well, hosts are starting to get paid out on it. They're doing it in waves, and they are doing it once a month. I would reconcile your... Um, I would reconcile your bookings. What you need to do in order to make sure that they're not screwing you over here is you need to go back into all of your like history. You should have an email account that has like updates like, hey, you've got a new booking. This person booked, this person booked. And then all of those reservations will also say, oh, this person canceled. So in your email, write the word canceled and search for every single canceled reservation that you've had. Get the reservation codes for those and then search your email account for all those reservation codes and then try to create a timeline for all of your canceled reservations. When did they book? What was the money owed? When did they cancel? What was the arrival date? And then check that against Airbnb's policy. Write out, write out the total amount that you were due due to this and then make sure that Airbnb is paying you what you're owed because otherwise we can't guarantee that Airbnb is actually doing it right because um, they're just so underwater with everything else that it's kind of hard to trust them to have the staff and the organization to do the right thing all the way. My personal opinion. So that's everything for today. If you're looking for more Airbnb information, we're posting videos daily here. I welcome you to subscribe, hit the notification bell. And remember, like the video, help Airbnb hosts around the world know that this video was important by giving it a like. Thanks for watching Airbnb Automated, and I'll see you on the other side.